Hello, friends and artists. Mrs. Gordon here. Um, we are wrapping up today our line and shape folk art landscape. Um, and we've been learning about the artist Heather Galler, and we've been learning how to use line and shape like Heather Galler. And today you get to learn about one of the principles of design, the principle of design called pattern. So this is your introduction video that's going to walk you through what to do with your slides. Um, after you finish watching this video, you're going to go to your slides and go through them more carefully on your own. So line and shape part three. Um, I'm going to be introducing the principle of design pattern today. You're going to add pattern and details to your art and color. And you're going to think, reflect, and record um, what you learned in this project. And you need crayons, you need markers or colored pencils in your art from last week. Optional things, you might want a paintbrush, you might want a cup of, small cup of water, maybe a Q-tip if you don't have a paintbrush, if you have water-based markers. I'm going to be showing you some ways that you can add color and pattern. You definitely need crayons, and you might need like a black um, waterproof marker like a Sharpie. So um, in art, just like there are the elements of art that we've been learning about, there are also the principles of design. There are seven principles of design, and these principles of design show how artists use the elements of art. So using the elements of art, they can create balance, contrast, emphasis, movement, pattern, that's what we're talking about today, rhythm, and unity. Principle of design, pattern. One principle of design is pattern. Pattern is when you repeat any of the elements of art over and over again. Um, these are all examples where you're repeating line or you're repeating shape. Um, you could repeat color. Um, but mostly when we're talking about pattern, we're talking about line and shape, and we might um, involve color in that as well. So when you get to this slide, you're going to watch this video to learn more about pattern from Robot Art School. Um, and then if you want to, you can re-watch this video of Heather Galler's work and notice all the patterns that she used in her work, like this repeated flower pattern or flower motif, as you're going to learn about, this kind of like paintbrush motif. Um, she used a lot of flowers in her field. In the sky here, she's using a thick line, vertical line pattern, but she's added dots to the dark blue. Okay, so take a look through here. You might get some ideas for patterns that you want to use. All right, so taking a look here at Landscapes by Heather Galler, look at this art by Miss Galler. How many different patterns can you see? So many. I see polka dots and stripes and different kinds of stripes, bumpy lines and checkerboard patterns and so many different kinds of patterns. I love how she used the bumpy line on the tree, how she creates even a pattern in her sun. And in both of the skies, she's got an unusual color choice of a pattern in there. Um, I like how she does different kinds of repeated lines. So like a straight line, a dotted line, um, maybe a zigzag line. She repeats shapes and lines sometimes. Okay, so take a look at what kind of lines she repeats. Vertical lines, diagonal lines, straight lines, bumpy lines, wavy lines, right? What shapes does she repeat? Definitely circles, sometimes organic flower shapes, squares or rectangles or diamonds here. And also, let's look at all the details that she's added to the geometric shapes on top of the horizon line. So you see that she didn't leave her trees plain, like this one she add, used Y lines to add like a tree limb pattern. This one she used spiral lines to add a tree limb pattern. Here she added some circles. These are really super cool and folk artsy because they're so, we will never see trees like this. But she added like circles and then semicircles around the circles. So cool. Um, and then, like I said, can you find pattern up in the sky, too? Yes, you can. She added polka dots in her sky here. All right. Um, then after you finish analyzing her art, you're going to be ready to finish your folk art landscape. And you'll need to grab some crayons or markers or colored pencils. And also, I show 
a paintbrush and how we can use a paintbrush with some markers if you don't have watercolor at home. If you have watercolor at home, you can use that too. Um, you're going to watch this video and I'll demonstrate for you how to add your details to your geometric shapes. I'll detail how to add your pattern to your um, to your land. I'll detail how you can color things in. I'll explain how to do that. When you're done, you're going to keep your art in a safe place. Uh -huh. And um, so you can bring it to school, right? This is your last week of virtual art at home, and next week you're going to be coming into school. Um, so we're going to talk about that in just a minute and what you need to do. But in the meanwhile, think about these questions. When you thought about what elements of art did you learn about, and when you talked about what did you learn about art or the artist, maybe you learned about a principle of design today. Who knows? Um, and then how did you make your art? Remember, did you draw today? Did you paint? Did you draw and paint? Um, did you color? What did you use to do that? Did you use markers, crayons? What? And what did you add? What were you drawing or coloring today? Patterns maybe? Details? You know. Then you're going to click here to record your answer and receive credit. Next week, coming back to school. Yay, I am so excited to see you. Um, you need to bring the two art pieces that you've done at home so far this year. So your Bitmoji U and your um, landscape. You're going to need to bring your art journal. You're going to need to bring any art supplies that you have at home that you were asked to get. So like crayons, pencils, pencil sharpeners. Um, if you have markers or colored pencils, um, all of that is going to come to school like in a Ziploc bag or a pencil box or something like that or a pencil case um, because for a while we'll just be using the art materials that you have from home until I get more comfortable with how we can safely share art supplies. So bring all those three things in when you come back to school and I can't wait to see you. Um, and yeah. You, uh, it's been awesome working with you at home, and I just, though, I can't wait to see you. So happy art making today, friends. Remember what you need to bring to school for me, and I hope you have a great week. Bye.